Did you know that every 40 seconds someone in the United States has a heart attack? That's more than 800,000 people every year. A heart attack, also known as a myocardial infarction, is a serious and potentially fatal condition that occurs when the blood supply to the heart muscle is interrupted. It can cause permanent damage to the heart, and even death if not treated quickly. But what exactly happens in the heart when a heart attack occurs? And how does it affect different functions of the body? To answer these questions, let me show you a simple and fun way to understand the anatomy and physiology of the heart and the heart attack. Imagine that your heart is like a pump that delivers water to different parts of a garden. The water represents the blood that carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells of your body. The pump represents the heart muscle that contracts and relaxes to pump the blood. The pipes represent the coronary arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle itself. Now, imagine that a heart attack is like a blockage or a leak in one of the pipes that prevents water from reaching the pump. This could be caused by a blood clot or a plaque that narrows or occludes a coronary artery. This could also be caused by a tear or a rupture in a coronary artery that causes bleeding into the wall of the artery. When a heart attack happens, the affected part of the heart muscle does not get enough blood and oxygen, and the pump starts to malfunction. This causes the pressure and flow of water to drop in the rest of the garden. This also causes pain and discomfort in the chest, which may radiate to the arm, neck, jaw, or back. Other symptoms may include shortness of breath, sweating, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, or fainting. The severity and duration of a heart attack depend on several factors, such as the size and location of the blockage or leak, the extent and type of damage to the heart muscle, and the availability and timeliness of treatment. The treatment options may include medications, angioplasty, stenting, or bypass surgery. The best way to prevent a heart attack is to maintain a healthy lifestyle and avoid risk factors such as smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, physical inactivity, stress, and family history. Hi everyone, welcome back to Dr. J. Lim's Holistic Health Corner. I'm Dr. J. Lim, an academic doctor from the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'm going to tell you about some of the foods that you should never eat if you want to avoid a heart attack, and why they are bad for your heart. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. The first food that you should avoid is coconut oil. Coconut oil is a popular ingredient in many cuisines and cosmetics. But is it really good for you? Coconut oil is a type of fat that comes from the flesh of coconuts. It is mostly composed of saturated fat, which is the kind of fat that can raise your bad cholesterol levels and increase your risk of heart disease. In fact, coconut oil has more saturated fat than butter, lard, or palm oil. You might have heard that coconut oil can also raise your good cholesterol levels and provide other benefits for your health. But is that true? Well, according to a recent systematic review and meta-analysis by Neil Akaton et al. of 16 clinical trials that compared the effects of coconut oil consumption with other fats on various cardiovascular risk factors, the answer is no. The researchers found that coconut oil consumption significantly increased LDL cholesterol by 10.47 mg per deciliter, and HDL cholesterol by 4.00 mg per deciliter as compared with non-tropical vegetable oils. However, coconut oil consumption did not significantly affect triglycerides, body weight, body fat, waist circumference, fasting plasma glucose, or C-reactive protein as compared with non-tropical vegetable oils. This means that coconut oil does not provide any benefits for other cardiovascular risk factors. So, what does this mean for you? Well, if you want to protect your heart health and lower your risk of heart attack or myocardial infarction, you should limit your intake of coconut oil and other sources of saturated fat. Instead, you should choose healthier fats, such as olive oil, canola oil, nuts, seeds, avocados, and fatty fish. These fats can help lower your bad cholesterol levels and provide other nutrients and antioxidants that are good for your heart. The second food that you should avoid is artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners are substances that are used to replace sugar in foods and drinks. They are often marketed as low-calorie or zero-calorie alternatives that can help you lose weight and prevent diabetes. But are they really safe for your heart? 
Artificial sweeteners include various molecules, such as aspartame, acesulfame potassium, and sucralose. You can find them in many products, such as diet soda, sugar-free gum, yogurt, candy, and tabletop sweeteners. Some people think that artificial sweeteners are harmless because they do not raise your blood sugar levels like sugar does. However, according to a recent population-based prospective cohort study of 103,388 French adults who participated in the web-based Nutrinet Sante cohort from 2009 to 2021, this is not the case. De Brass et al. assessed the dietary intakes and consumption of artificial sweeteners from all sources by repeated 24-hour dietary records. The results showed that total artificial sweetener intake was associated with increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. Artificial sweeteners were more particularly associated with cerebrovascular disease risk. The researchers concluded that artificial sweeteners especially aspartame, acesulfame potassium, and sucralose were associated with increased risk of cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, and coronary heart diseases. They also recommended that consumers should limit their intake of artificial sweeteners and favor natural alternatives, such as water, tea, coffee, or fruits. The third food that you should avoid is ultra-processed foods. Ultra-processed foods are industrially manufactured ready-to-eat or ready-to-heat formulations containing food additives and little or no whole foods in contrast to processed foods, which are whole foods preserved by traditional techniques such as canning or pickling. You can find them in many products, such as chips, crackers, cookies, candy, ready meals, soft drinks, and ice cream. Some people think that ultra-processed foods are convenient and tasty, but are they really good for you? Ultra-processed foods may affect your cardiometabolic health through a myriad of mechanisms, beyond the traditionally recognized individual nutrients. Processing induces significant changes to the food matrix, for which ultra-processed foods may affect health outcomes differently than unrefined whole foods with similar nutritional composition. Notably, the highly degraded physical structure of ultra-processed foods may affect your cardiometabolic health by influencing absorption kinetics, satiety, glycemic response, and the gut microbiota composition and function. Food additives and neoformed contaminants produced during processing may also play a role in cardiovascular disease risk. According to a recent review of the current evidence by Jewell et al. on the possible biological mechanisms underlying the associations between ultra-processed foods and CVD, these pathways may explain why higher consumption of ultra-processed foods is associated with increased risk of CVD in observational studies. The fourth food that you should avoid is trans fat. Trans fat is a type of fat that is created by adding hydrogen to vegetable oil to make it more solid and stable. Trans fat is found in some margarines, shortenings, baked goods, fried foods, and snack foods. Some people think that trans fat is harmless because it can improve the texture and shelf life of foods, but is it really good for you? Trans fat can affect your cardiometabolic health through various mechanisms, depending on the source and type of trans fat. There are two main sources of trans fat, industrial and ruminant. Industrial trans fat is produced by partially hydrogenating vegetable oils, while ruminant trans fat is naturally produced by bacteria in the stomachs of cows, sheep, and goats. ITF and NTF have different chemical structures and biological effects. According to a recent review of the literature by Papoyan et al. on the effect of trans fat on human health, ITF is more harmful than NTF. ITF can raise LDL cholesterol and lower HDL cholesterol levels in the blood, increase inflammation and oxidative stress, and impair endothelial function. These effects can increase the risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. NTF may have some beneficial effects, such as reducing the risk of diabetes, but they should be used with caution. The consumption patterns of trans fat vary widely across countries and regions, depending on the availability affordability, and regulation of trans fat-containing foods. Some countries have implemented mandatory labeling, voluntary reformulation, or legal limits on trans fat content in foods to reduce trans fat intake among consumers. However, many countries still lack effective policies to control trans fat exposure. Thank you so much for watching this video and learning with me. I hope you found it useful and informative. 
If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. You can also check out my previous video here, where I reveal three natural remedies that can reverse atherosclerosis. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. I love hearing from you and getting your feedback. Thank you again for your support and for joining me on this journey of holistic health. I'll see you in the next video.